Hello, this is uh, Simone Cohen from Chocolate Audio. And this is a walkthrough for our Harps product. And uh, well, it's gonna take, uh, I think, a bit long to dive into everything. And well, I'm recording it and we'll see if I, if I will spread it in chapters or whatever. But so let's begin. So once uh, you uh, buy the product and you download it, uh, you will basically have uh, three sets of uh, um, compressed files. One is uh, this one, which is Glissando Harps containing Glissando Concert Harp, the manual, and Glissando Orchestral Harp. Uh, and inside there you will find only the, the NKI and the resource container files uh, and folders. Uh, the other two are the samples, so the Glissando Concert Harp samples and the Glissando Orchestral Harp samples. Uh, so what happens? Uh, basically, uh, you just need to make sure that the, 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 the RAR files with the samples uh, get into in this position, basically. Uh, so the, the first one here and the second one, the Orchestral Harp here. Uh, these should make sure that mm, your NKIs load properly, but we'll see. What happens now is that once you place everything in the right place, uh, you could do something, you could do yourself a favor and you could use the quick load feature in contact, uh, which is uh, addressable from up here. Uh, you can just open it up by clicking on it. And all you need to do is uh, adding Glissando Harps, the whole folder to your uh, quick load wherever you want you can even nest folders if you don't know about it there are plenty of videos about this feature but you know you just drop it and contacts takes you know just a few seconds uh, browsing through the folder and then it will add the folder up here uh, as you can see um, so glissando harps now contains features these two folders uh, this is the original harp we released in uh, 2016 um, and this is the new harp together they form glissando harps uh, the new harp uh, once you do this you may want you may want to do a, a proper batch receive this should make sure that um, every sample in uh, in the in these folders uh, is correctly uh, looked for when loading up your NKIs. Uh, it's a bit of a risky thing because you, you know you have you really have to make sure that contact is finding all of the samples because what happens is that if he doesn't find the samples, um, uh, it will basically uh, unmap them from the NKIs. <laughs> so you will end up with an empty NKI. So maybe make sure to have at least a, a, a backup copy of these uh, NKIs or, you know, just drop me a line uh, through the support email and uh, I will send you, you know, the, 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 the NKIs, no problem. But whatever, uh, make sure you have a backup copy. So really proceed, yes. So I'm pointing it to the right place, which is Glissando Harps folder. And I'll let him choose. He's going to basically um, browse through the folder and look for everything, uh, every NKI and every patch inside the every sample refer referred by the single NKIs. So right now my patches are already correctly referenced so he is basically receiving them um, but you know no problem it takes quite a bit uh, he it might ask you for where the samples are so just make sure that you point them you point contact to the uh, to the whole uh, glissando harps folder because in this way it make it, it will make sure that he's looking also for uh, the the resources so the graphics and the and the, um, the reverbs the IR reverbs uh, and so on. So it's now over and let's try and load. Well, um, there are five GOH, so Glissando Orchestra Arps uh, and KIs. 
Uh, why? Well, because we recorded the harp with uh, many different microphones and we thought about mm, you know, giving them all in a single program. And I thought that that was going to be overkill. Uh, also because during the glissando, uh, you end up easily with a lot of voices uh, in terms of polyphony. Uh, so we decided to limit that to, let's say, well, to four microphones. Uh, and that means that, of course, having eight microphones, we wanted to create some combinations for you. So these five programs are the uh, fruit of these uh, research. So you have Berlin, Hollywood, London, Paris, and Rome, uh, which are basically different combination of these eight mics, uh, combinations of four of these eight mics. Um, uh, it's quite fun actually so let's load Berlin so it's loading up maybe quick maybe not but of course you need to wait for it to to load um, a few remarks uh, we have two main playing modes which is which uh, and these two playing modes are piano and harp piano is basically you will play the harp just like you will play you will play a piano so you just you know i'm not re a real piano player so please forgive me uh, so so you're playing basically uh the uh well you know all of all of the keys uh, so you're playing chromatically let's say um the harp mode uh uses the same um, principle uh, an harpist would, would use, which basically relies on what? On seven strings for each octave, and the same string in every octave is tuned the same way. So if I decide to detune uh, or retune using the pedals, uh, for example, uh, D, and I take it to D sharp, uh, so, sorry, D flat, uh, all of the Ds will become flat. So, you know, every way, every every time I'm playing uh, C, D, for example, it will be a D flat in every octave. So that is a, a feature of the harp. Um, what you can do is, uh, of course, change the, 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 the tuning of the strings uh, in real time, uh, which is quite fun. Uh, in this mode, you can really be very expressive if you learn playing it, uh, which is not really uh, easy maybe for a piano player. But uh, if you learn, for example, if you sight read uh, in a hard part um, without looking at the uh, accidentals, uh, uh, you can later on <laughs> play the accidentals with with the um, uh, with the pedals. So you can basically uh, turn uh, the pedals, you know, use the pedals and you know change the pedals uh, following the, the the same the same uh, uh, part basically. Uh, it can it can be quite fun, especially when you're programming. It makes your life much easier. At least that is how it works for me. Um, so, uh, pedals. Uh, pedals are reachable only in glissando mode and or in harp mode. So, in piano mode, they won't do anything. They will only work in glissando mode, which we'll see uh, uh, later on. But in harp mode, basically, you have uh, the uh, first octave of your uh, keyboard, which is uh, actually... Uh, if you have an 88 keys keyboard, it will be the first octave below the 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 the, uh, the lowest keys, of course, uh, which is dedicated to switching pedals. So uh, you can basically use it, okay, to switch pedals, pedal statuses. And you can do it in a, uh, in, in a few different ways. And these ways are um, dealt with uh, in the preferences. Uh, basically, the pedal ski switch mode can be performing, so it's relative. Uh, so basically, the velocity of these seven keys 
uh, from C to B uh, will determine with uh, which status, which position the pedal has. So it's if it's uh, flat, sharp, or natural. Uh, the programming is absolute. So this makes sure that if you play back, if you record the pedal, the pedal um, uh, movements in your DAW, uh, and you will later on, uh, you know, play back from any point, you it will make sure that the pedal switching is recallable. Let's say so you won't end up with uh, some strange pedal positions because you're not playing it back, uh, playing it back from from the same point every time. Um, relative pedal switch velo basically uh, it's the split point to determine if to raise the pedal position or lower the pe pedal position when in a, a relative position uh, the absolute basically splits the, the one Twen one 127 velocity span uh, it, it splits in three and you can basically set the, the, the pedal position in, 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 in an absolute way so so F sharp, uh, F, F flat, I'm sorry, as usual, uh, F sharp and F natural. Uh, so uh, this might not be that easy with the, with a keyboard, but it's thought out as something that you use in, in your DAW. Uh, but it's pretty effective, I, I think. Um, so uh, this is dealing with the pedals and this is, of course, make sure that, for example, want to turn these sh uh, sharp uh, I'm sorry I played uh, an E <laughs> okay this was the, 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 the F C F A and I'm getting back to The, uh, the, the the tuning changes also during the the, the, the release part okay so uh, this is uh, all you need to know about pedals um, uh, and the other thing you need to know uh, which is I think quite important is that we decided to uh, to have uh, um, a behavior which is more like uh, pianists will will use it uh, basically what this means is that uh, the harp gets played the samples are played like just like you would play a piano so when you release a key you will, you are also stopping the, the note playing back in this way I'm sorry I'm in harp mode so I'm releasing the key and the the, the, the key uh, the, the string gets uh, stopped basically by the by the fingertip of the harpist um, this is not really a natural way of dealing with it because actually what happens on a harp is that unless you decide to, the strings will keep on ringing. So it's more like that. And it will ring indefinitely unless you decide to, you know, stop the stop the the harp with your finger, uh, the, the, the resonating string with your finger, or you stop everything every potential uh, resonating uh, string with uh, your two hands basically uh, so we incorporated this and this is done by uh, basically uh, using the the sustain pedal so um, this harp in order to be played back just like an harpist will play let's say you need to play it with the sustain pedal depressed and basically uh, use the sustain pedal like you will do with a piano. So you use it to stop the resonation, uh, the res resonating strings. Uh, to give you an example, I'm so now sustain pedal off, on and off, and you can hear you have sounds, a, a sound which is ex actually the sound of the two hands stopping the strings, uh, and this always applies to. So every time I'm releasing the sustain pedal. But anyway, sustain pedal down. And even if I'm releasing, everything is playing 
because the sustain pedal is still down and now I'm releasing the sustain pedal. That's it. This is basically the, uh, the, the way you should play. And uh, uh, so the sustain pedal is your best friend in the, with this instrument. Let's stop it and release the sustain pedal. Okay, that's the way it works. Uh, another thing you might not be aware of, um, the harp has uh, natural resonances. Uh, so it's basically acting as if you are always depressing the sustain pedal on a real piano. So basically you have sympathetic resonances from all of the other strings. Uh, this, is, this applies much more in the mid to lower end of the harp, but it definitely applies, always, always applies. So um, what happens is that even though I'm not right now playing the sustain pedal, with the sustain, sustain pedal uh, depressed, and I'm playing and releasing a chord. As you can hear, there's this trail of resonances playing. This is that with, uh, in the articulation page, you can enable or disable the resonances and set the volume. This is something a lot of people have, have been asking me. Uh, uh, through support or directly friends and stuff like that. Uh, it's very easy. It's in the articulation window and you just disable it if you don't like it. But this is what makes the harp, this sample harp real, let's say, lifelike. Uh, maybe you want to lower it, maybe. But what happens is that if you are playing the harp using the sustain pedal, Every time you're releasing the sustain pedal, pedal the, the virtual harpist basically stops the strings with his, his or her own two hands. It's since it's virtual. Uh, so uh, what I'm doing, sus sustain down. So uh, pardon me, the odd position, but any. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm releasing the sustain pedal and everything stops including resonances, because of course they get stopped by the two hands. The two hands stop every string uh, at the same time. Uh, so this is the best way to deal with it. Let's look also at the rest of this uh, rightmost part. Uh, pedals. You set the level of the pedals, so the, the noise is produces by, produced by the pedals, and you can also disable it if you want, if you get annoyed by it. But of course, that is this is a part of what makes uh, the sample set real, real sounding, you know, lifelike. Uh, really samples. We have, uh, in this case, in the Glissando Orchestra Arp, we have two different kinds of release trails. Uh, well, off, of course, it turns them off. So, <laughs> of course, you will not have a any of those. And it's, uh, you know, almost keyboard synth-like. Um, tips and etouffee. Uh, so basically, etouffee is, is a technique that um, artists learn uh, and it, it takes them quite a bit, as far as I know, to learn the, uh, learning plop properly because they learn to stop the strings in the most uh, soft, the softest way possible so as, as not to make, you know, the stopping hearable. Um, so that is the etouffee kind of technique. Uh, the tips is basically using the fingertips, uh, you know, not really taking care that much. And that is, uh, that applies in a better way when you want to be aggressive. Maybe if you're doing something, uh, you know, like, um, I don't know, modern music where you really want to make this effect hearable, you know. Uh, but, you know, basically the etouffee will be your go-to thing. Uh, getting back on the main page, uh, we're dealing with uh, piano and harp mode, and let's dive into the glissando. Glissando mode, uh, let's look at it. Uh, first thing, pedals. Uh, we looked how to uh, switch the pedals using the MIDI keyboard, or of course you can also use the you know the user interface in contact, but it's not very user friendly, let's say. Uh, <laughs> um, but we featured both for the glissando and the hard mode. We featured these uh, 
uh, these two knobs uh, that deal with uh, uh, tonal centers and modes slash chords, basically. Um, you can select a tonal center, and of course, as you select it, you also hear the sound, the feedback of the pedals moving to, you know, basically set the, the harp in, in that tonal center. And then you can set in, you know, in major mode, minor natural, harmonic, minor melodic. And then you can set uh, a few mo further chords and modes that are easily playable in that way. For example, you want to play a whole tone scale in, uh, let's say, D, D whole tone scale. And we are in harp mode right now. And there you have it. So... And of course, you might have heard the uh, an E and F strings, so the E and F keys will basically share the same note because, of course, it's a whole tone scale, so it's it's a six note for octave. And on the real harp, you cannot play six note for octave unless you skip them. But <laughs> of course, you have to make sure that everything you may want to play plays that scale. So you you will end up with basically C. D, E, E, F sharp, well, yeah, F sharp in case of D, okay, uh, G sharp, A sharp, and C. Okay, there you have it. Um, that is a very cool feature because, of course, it helps you, you know, playing stuff quite easily. And these two are mappable to uh, with to automation, well, to automation to MIDI CCs. Uh, actually, they are uh, pre-mapped. And right now, I'm doing this demo with a keyboard. I don't really, I'm not really familiar with, but uh, they should be pre-assigned. They should. <laughs> Let's see if I can find them. Well, maybe they are here. Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, they should be pre-assigned to um, cutoff and resonance. So if you have a, a, a MIDI keyboard which is which has a cutoff and resonance, that is the MIDI uh, standard, MIDI MIDI standard um, for cutoff and resonance, which is I think uh, MIDI CC seventy one and seventy four for resonance and cut off respectively I think as far as I remember but basically you can control them in this way I found the first one of course and not the second one because the keyboard is not set properly but I can do something about it okay I found it okay uh, so it's already there but any, in any way if you want to change it just use your right clicking or control clicking and do a learn MIDI CC uh, you basically hit learn, move whatever you want to move, and you assign this, this control to, to it. And this applies basically for every control in our, in our user interface. You, you can customize the harp to your likings. Uh, remember, just remember that once you do that, you need to save the NKI, uh, so the, the instrument. Uh, maybe don't override it, just rename it. To your liking so you still have access to the you know to the original program but you know just remember you need to save it as something different uh this is kind of cool in my opinion um oh so um what else um oh glissandos uh so glissando the glissando engine gets turned on in two different ways remotely um if you're in hard mode you will let's see if i get to the correct octave okay another octave okay this is the last octave so the first octave uh, it will let's see if i can show you okay we are in harp mode this may this means that this first octa octave deals with the pedal positions uh, so you have to hit c sharp zero in that octave to turn the glissando mode on and off as you can see on the screen okay if you are in piano mode 
And I, re I remind you that if you want to switch it remotely from your MIDI keyboard, you can assign a MIDI CC to these buttons also. But basically, if you're in piano mode, instead, you're using C and C sharp to enter and get out of. So C to get into glissando mode and C sharp to get out of glissando mode. Uh, we wanted to keep the C sharp to be consistent with the other way. Uh, this is where there's a, there's a reason for this, of course. Uh, we are not trying to make your life complicated. Uh, you have up to 10 articulations. You can select any of the available and you can map it to any of the keys. You can even do double mappings if you want or need to, and this is useful and you, you will see why in, in just a few seconds. Uh, so basically, when you are in piano mode, uh, starting D, D of that same octave, the one below the extension of your MIDI 88 MIDI keyboard, uh, will basically switch between the available, 10 available articulations. So from D to B, okay? So I just switch on the last articulation on B, which is a song xylophonic. Uh, I can hardly see right now, xylophonic. So, as you can hear, and I'm getting back to pizzicato mode. And switching to harmonic mode with uh, D sharp. And sans sifflet on E. Which are only on uh, C and E, the lowest C and E of the ARP, which is basically, you know, it's an effect. Um, and then Bartok on F, oh, sure, on F, yeah. Soft Bartok, thanks to the velocity. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, uh, you know, uh, getting back to pizzicato mode. So basically, uh, the articulation page allows you to select any of the available articulation and assign them to these keys, basically. In piano mode, from D to E, B of that octave, and in uh, harp mode, from D sharp to up to the D sharp uh, an octave above, um, dealing with, uh, I'm sorry, from F sharp, I'm sorry, uh, from F sharp, F sharp to uh, D sharp, two octaves above, so only the, the, the black keys, of course, uh, because the white keys get used for pedals or for playing, okay? Uh, so that is the only change that happens in the two different modes. Getting back to piano mode, uh, so basically you can assign as I told you, you can also create a velocity split. So you can, for example, switch between pizzicato, which is done with the fingertips, and, for example, the pizzicato nails, so where basically you play with your nails. And let's say that the switching happens at 110. So... Okay. Okay, that's the whole thing. Uh, you can set any of the key switches to act as a switch or as a temporary switch. For example, the sans sifflet, uh, I doubt I will want to stay in that mode for a long time even though I want to play them. So I might want to assign these in temp mode, which basically means that that kind of articulation will only play as long as you keep that key depressed. So E in that octave, and I'm playing the sifflet. As soon as I release it, I'm getting back to pizzicato. Okay, so th this is all about the temp mode. Uh, you can set the articulation level relative to the, every to, to the other articulations, so that, that helps out, you know, if you need to balance out things. 
Um, and we also have a note repeat kind of function, which is which is kind of helpful if you wanna uh, emulate, uh, let's say, uh, you know, a very fast acting kind of uh, thing, like it. So now you know what you can do is try and do that. I'm not a good keyboard player. If you activate repeat, every key release actually triggers another note. So, okay, you can do that. Um, it's not very easy to be played <laughs> with an harp. Actually, a, a real harp player will probably do something like this. Let's stay in C major, and if they want to do something like that, they will. They will probably, for example, doing it with the E. They will turn the F flat, so it's playing the F string but flattened, flattened it flattened, I'm sorry, uh, and do something like that. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not in harp mode, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, of course, uh, with the sustain pedal. So that is playable by a real harpist. The other thing is, you know, not that that is not playable, but, you know, it's very tough for them. And why make things complicated? So that is another thing about the articulations, and you know, it's pretty much it. The articulations are pizzicato, you know, the standard piece. It's pizzicato, harmonic, sans harmonic, so uh, the harmonics. The sans siffle, as I told you, so it's C and D, the lowest. So it's basically, you know, cross across the strings. Um, Bartok mode, so it's uh, played near the 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 the, um, uh, the 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 body of the harp and ending up on the harp, just like you will do, like, pretty much like you will do on on, on strings. Um, so this is where. We are switching to pizzicato nase mode, of course, <laughs> in that way. That's why it, it, it was changing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm, for, I'm, out of, uh, I'm out of range. I'm sorry, I was out of range because, of course, you cannot play Bartok in all of the range because it's very tough to reach for the lower strings uh, for an harpist uh, and playing that technique. Okay, so that is it. Uh, Sons guitaric nails, so it's uh, played next to the uh, to the body of the harp, but it's not ending on the body like the Bartok, and it's played with the with nails. So it's a guitar-like, let's say, kind of sound, played with the nails, and song guitaric is played with the fingertips, same position. And uh, mechanics FX, so it's uh, you know noise, mechanic noise, made by uh, pizzicato on the end part of the strings, upper end parts of the string. This is uh, one of the effects that get used from time to time. Pizzicato nails, as I told you. And uh, sans xilharmonic, so it's a special kind of harmonic like sound. Xylophonic. Another way to muffle the strings. Hits on strings. Sons esoteric, which is basically the sounds of the pedals uh, with the strings left resonating. So that is it. Uh, paper sordino, so the, the, the harp gets 
we use a paper so you know so it makes this sound oops uh, velvet sordino piece of velvet across the strings and tin foil piece of tin foil kind of funny uh, xylophonic open which is another way of muffling a bit more open sounding very very beautiful this is only available in this harp not in the other one uh, hit somebody so basically hitting the body of the harp like a percussion same thing with resonances so letting the strings resonate Okay, and appoggiato. Appoggiato is uh, basically um, it's the sound that you make when you play the glissando in a way where you basically play the harp and uh, let your finger rest on the next string, which can rest for a bit or just you know go across the strings so it's a kind of slightly different sound uh, and it's very useful also for our glissando technique you cannot play appoggiato in that way unless you do a glissando kind of thing so back to the glissando mode so we are in piano mode so turning on the glissando is a C sharp I'm sorry C <laughs> okay so it's C uh, how you play a glissando um, it's pretty easy basically you play in time two notes in time means that the time between the two notes will determine the 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 length in terms of time of the of the glissando so you know i just play let's say this note and this note so it's uh, a, a uh, we are in a c major let's turn to another kind of thing minor melodic uh c major and i'm starting from a to a okay That's it. Unless you stop it. Okay. Um, that is uh, the first example. Um, you have two glissando also these under CC automation I kind of remind you to agree some other things which is uh, up and down and well forward and backward and always forward so you can play only in one direction or by direction so getting you know from bottom to top and vice versa or vice versa so meaning top to bottom so the first note and the last note basically decide everything uh, another example uh, shorter glissando you know something like that and speedier okay that was another example one other thing uh, which is very important you can set you can select very different ways of dealing with the glissando so these are the glissando types single glissando will only play once so it will start to end and then stop uh, glissando will continue until you decide to stop it and we will have also the glissando preferences glissando accent start basically it will accent the the first note you played uh, this is something that is used on the harp uh, single glissando accent start does the same thing but just plays once uh, glissando accent end 
it will accent the end note and single glissando accent and no and will do the same thing double glissando basically it plays a cross thing so where basically the harpist plays uh, a downward glissando with the left hand and an upward glissando at the same time with the right hand for example okay to give you an example this is what you may end up with uh, in that case uh, so we are in glissando mode which is activated and you can do something like this okay that is the thing okay um, how do you change glissando mode I mean you cannot really <laughs> look for for the for the menu uh, while you're playing or programming and you know that is and, and also this is not automatable in uh, in contact so it's not very you know <laughs> user friendly uh well basically you have key commands so when you're in the glissando mode so when you access the glissando mode and you turn it on so it's c on piano in piano mode or c, c sharp in harp mode then you have the rest of the black keys which is uh, open to all of the glissando modes and also on switch to switching between bi-direction bi-directional and um, single direction as you can see this is a uh, uh, b flat lowest octave on your keyboard on your 88 note keyboard so you know all of the different modes get switched by the black keys in the same order as you see them on, on the in the menu so you can also do that on the fly so i can you know play back a glissando you know i'll set up a glissando let's let's do that um, something like this and switch the glissando mode on the fly single glissando of course stops so i have to play it again <laughs> And so on. So, uh, for example, I can do something like that. It might be fun. Okay, something like this. Okay, while in your, you're in glissando mode, um, you can so reminding you in piano mode you turn it on using the C okay uh, and in uh, harp mode C sharp um, uh, the C sharp when you're in glissando mode takes you out of the glissando mode okay always in every way so uh, but uh, D sharp stops the glissando but leaves you in glissando mode so that allows you to stop the glissando in any way uh, anything is going to play it stops it naturally and you can play another glissando without exiting out of glissando mode okay uh, i hope this is clear enough um controls so uh, basically soften will soften the attack of the glissando so also oh, we already have the you know the smoothest sounding samples that you know replicate the the way the harp is play in glissando mode but you can even soften that if you think that the glissando is too easily perceivable let's say you know the the attack of the single notes so this is basically uh you know some kind of fading on each note uh, acceleration basically it says the acceleration of glissando i'm going to explain every everything and then we'll I'll do an example. Uh, time and velo is under randomized, so basically it makes sure that you know the timing between every note it gets randomized a bit, so you don't have always the same kind of glissando repeating, especially if you do you know some repeat thing on, on the same thing on the same tuning and stuff like that. Uh, same thing goes for velocity, so it kind of randomizes the velocity of each note in the glissando, making it different every time. And accent basically sets the velocity 
of the accent in the, the accent modes. So glissando accent start and end and so on. Uh, so that sets the, veloc the velocity of set you will have. Um, uh, the glissando settings, uh, stop mode, basically when you stop the glissando with the C sharp, uh, I'm sorry, the D sharp key, um, it, it tells the, the glissando to stop immediately. So as soon as you hit the D sharp, it will stop or at the end of round. So it will end the round of the glissando uh, to the highest note uh, or lowest note, depending. Uh, and, and that's it. But you can also set the key release to stop glissando or do nothing like it was now. If I set it to stop glissando, you don't need to uh, use the D sharp to stop the glissando. You basically need to release the key that started or and or is ending the glissando. So you know the two keys, either one. The last one that gets released stops the glissando. So for example, if I'm in immediate mode with stop glissando and I play glissando, it will and as soon as I release, that's it. Okay. In end of round, same thing, but it will end the round. So okay. I released the key way before the end of the glissando. Um, you can also use a MIDI CC uh, to turn the glissando on and off. So not using the keyboard, you can also use a MIDI CC so you can assign uh, any of these uh, you know, keys on your keyboard or whatever else. You can also set a volume offset for the glissando. This offset is uh, compared to the to the pizzicato mode, let's say, uh, to the pizzicato articulation. So if you finding your glissandos are too loud or too soft, you know, depending on the situation. Also, this is under MIDI CC automation if you want. Okay, so uh, we'll give you a couple of examples. Let's get out of here and hear the the, ac the action of these guys in real time. Uh, let's do a glissando accent start, and there you go. Remember, this preferences was set to stop end of round or immediate, but stopping on key release. Let's turn it off, and so it's on D sharp zero. So I can release the key and play with the guy. Soft acceleration. Also try and switch some of the modes and chords using the mapped kind of things over here, so you can hear how how fun it is. Um, at least it is for me. So uh, you know, get back to glissando. Uh, we are still in glissando mode because you see from there off. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, glissando mode. Uh, let's switch mode to glissando and uh, there you go let's play glissando and change some some things right now we are in uh, e major 7 
Of course, uh, you might want to lower the pedal volume in these situations. Uh, and of course, the harpist will not switch between scales and modes in this way, but it will go direct and one pedal at a time. Of course, this is not replica, replica, re well, re replicable in, a, in, a, in, in this situation. But, you know, uh, you can basically play with it. Maybe, maybe we can, you know, you can have fun with it. Then in your DAW, just edit out all of the, you know, uh, notes in between, all of the values in between. So it, it, it's just a direct switch to the different things. But it's kind of fun anyway, also, especially to demo. <laughs> okay, here we are uh, on, the, on the mixer page. The mixer page basically allows you to mix. <laughs> um, very easy. Uh, master, well, the master volume of the harp. Uh, reverb send, basically the amount of signal that, get, that gets sent to the reverb. So you, in short, the amount of reverb. Uh, swap alert, so you can swap the, the stereo field, left and right, width. From mono to expanded stereo, mm, just use a bit of care with this guy, but you know it can be useful, especially when mixing, you know, the ARP with other instruments. And then we have the the channels. So um, the single channels will basically let you mix stuff uh, between you know the four different microphones that you have, especially in a GOH. GCH has just let's say just three channels. Uh, in this case, for example, in uh, Berlin, we have the Bloom Line pair, which is uh, made with the Tube CM7, which is a uh, uh, you know 47 U47-like kind of uh, microphone. Uh, SU013 uh, uh, Soyuz, which is a Navy close kind of set. Um, the UY95, which is a mono mic, close, and then a room made with AEA and AIDS. Um, let's listen to them, just in solo, for example. Uh, oops, I'm still in arpeggio mode, in glissando mode. This is the CM7, this is SU013. And the U195 sound looks mono. This is kind of useful. And the room, like. a full bass kind of room sound just listen to the very warm kind of low end just pardon the position is very tough for me for playing uh, and I'm not a great player anyway uh, so these are the sounds. Then you have the, uh, we're switching to the other sounds before the end. We have the reverb, you turn it on and select one of the IRs we created for this instrument and the piano and you can just, as you can hear, the big reverb. <laughs> well, uh, for example, the Taj Mahal, you can do, you know, very Delay. Well, it's a simple delay. Level time repeats and damping, high frequency damping. EQ, pretty effective EQ, where you
okay pretty pretty colorful it's of course the stock EQ in uh, in contact compressor you only have the mix the amount of compression so from full compressed to you know basically dry and with some presets we created for it uh, distortion drive and the amount of clean signal which is fed in parallel amplifier it turns everything into mono that is not up to us but it's up to contact and uh, you know toy like kind of thing well it can be useful in some music genres and then you have the envelope page in the envelope page you can set you know the the time constants for the amp envelope time and level constants for the amp envelope so you can play Soften the attack. You also have attack curve you can play with. Um, hold, decay, sustain time, release time. You can do pretty much a lot of things with these guys. You know, maybe turn. Of course, you really hear the release here, but you can have a decay time. Okay, you turn off the releases in uh, the articulation window and you have a totally different kind of sound. Oh, uh, what else? Um, getting back to the mixer, mixer page, envelopes, uh, you also have a filter with a filter envelope, which is a simple AHD, attack, hold and decay envelope, pretty much. You know, low pass, two poles, four poles, high pass, band pass. Let's, you know, reset the envelope to its natural kind of thing. Cut off. And the amount of. Okay, you know, just for fun, uh, it's nice to have. <laughs> uh, so that is pretty much it. The only last thing um, I'm leaving you with is the presets. Every harp and KI comes with factory presets, and you can also save your own presets inside of here. Uh, of course, the, the setting is uh, saved with your DAW, so you don't really have to save presets over here, but it's useful if you want to, you know, uh, find them back uh, next time. Um, you know, you don't need to save the NKI, but you just need to make sure that you're not moving it or whatever else because they get saved externally uh, in, in a relative position. Um, but, you know, if, if you want, you can, can also save the NKI, whatever else. You can store and delete presets, and this is a monitor with the plane, uh, currently playing articulation. There's an help for it, each single page, basically very shortly showing and telling you what I've been telling you for like an hour or more now <laughs> and um, it works on every page um, in the software so basically you know every page has, has got its own help um, by clicking on the logo you end up with the version and build date which might be useful for in case of support uh, well, and then the credits, and I want to personally thank all of the people involved in this. Uh, it's been, a, you know, a, a lot of fun, actually. Um, well, there's myself, and then uh, there's another Simone, Torna Quindici, which assisted me with Vito, and uh, the great Davide, we, who did the original scripting with me, uh, conducting, and then myself, that I did all of the modif modification for this version, the updates, uh, harp player, Silvia, uh, great, great harpist, uh, based in Verona, so if you ever need a very good harpist, just look for her. Um, and that's it. So I hope you will enjoy Glissando. Oh, not really. Let's hear some of the other sounds. I'm sorry. I just was going to close and it's not a close down yet. 
So let's hear some of the other sounds. Uh, the CMC-64, um, well, basically a ships. Open and very deaf, you know, clear. Room, MKH, Sennheiser, and it's, a, it's an XY kind of thing, so it's kind of, you know, pretty effective. Even though it's very close, well, not very, but it's close, it's... It's pretty effective in, a, in an orchestral kind of scenario by pumping it later on. Then the N8, which we listened to already, let's listen to it again shortly. Pardon me. And then the decatry, we also have the decatry. Okay, let's pick up one of the other guys here like uh, London after a while they get repeating so the N22 another set of uh, um, of uh, ribbon mics but close um, this is the gay mono guy we already heard and these guys we already listened to um, after London there's Paris and we got this guy, this guy, this guy. We oh no, we already heard all of them. And let's see if Rome gives you gives us another surprise. <laughs> uh, maybe not. <laughs> uh, so N twenty two SU oh well whatever. Uh, just to give you an example, this is uh, these two mics are in opposite position, and this is the Soyuz pair A B. I'm sorry. A again. And the N22. Oops. So, uh, all of these mics allows you, well, single or mixed, allows you to we really achieve a lot of different sounds from this this single ARP, and uh, I'm really excited by you know the, all of these different sounds that you can make out of it. So please learn and you know experiment with this, with this uh, uh, page. Um, one thing, uh, if you see yourself in struggle with polyphony, especially in glissando mode, when you mute one of these channels. Uh, the voices sh follow, so it's not an, an audio mu mute, it's a, let's say a MIDI mute, so the voices don't get eaten if you're in mute, so they get cut out uh, of the whole thing, so it's a, it's a way f to save on, of course, on, on CPU cycles, especially maybe when you're programming, then you can, you know, maybe freeze or whatever else you're doing, bouncing, and, you know, you can set your own sound and, you know, give the best sound possible, uh, you know, it's pretty much it. So I really hope you're having, you're having, an, or you're going to have a lot of fun with uh, uh, Glissando Harps, and you know how to catch you some other time on this channel thank you very much for following so far <laughs> ciao